In primetime news tonight, gang initiation. Shocking details revealed about what it entails. We want to move residents affected by air pollution in St. Elizabeth seeking relocation. And two dead following murder-suicide in St. Andrew community. Hello and welcome to Primetime News on air and online at onespotmedia.com. I'm Herman Green. And I'm Janella Precious. Also this evening, the top business stories of the day and Andrea Chisholm has our preview. Well, we're asking this evening, is that how they flow? Several trade unions across the region are speaking out against injustices by telecommunications company Flow. Their concerns later in the business day. Okay, thank you, Andrea. From Andrea, we go to Jeremy with sports. Thank you, Herman. Well, the CONCACAF Gold Cup draw was made today. The reggae boys have been placed in Group C. And we'll tell you who will join them in Group C a bit later on. All right. There's also sports commentary, E-Prime, and weather in this newscast. But before the break, the feedback question. This evening we are asking, what do you think can be done to tackle the increase in domestic violence in Jamaica? You can share comments online, facebook.com slash television Jamaica, and tweet us at television jam. Stay with us. Primetime News returns after the break. The anti-gang law came into effect in 2014. But nearly five years later, it has helped crime fighters secure fewer than a handful of convictions. One of the reasons cited for its poor returns, gangsters are evolving and elements of the law are not modern enough to keep pace with them. For instance, gangs have found some twisted evil ways to recruit. Committee members told Wednesday sitting some of the deeds new members have to perform to get into gangs. Sometimes you have to make a dopey yes. in order to qualify mm -hmm. or, kill a baby or, or something, some, something, or something like that. there's more gang members kill other gangsters in the vicinity of schools to send messages to students oftentimes they do this to other gangsters who try to quit the gang their message in such instances are to tell students if you join our gang and try to leave you will be killed one of the things that Mok was, was contending with is that they will seek to discipline members of the gang in the presence of schools to demonstrate the consequence of leaving or removing from the gang once they are members. Now they shoot them at the school gate. Every child who is not a member of the gang decides, well, they're not getting out of the gang. This is why the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency MOCA wants the law to be amended for gangsters who perform these types of crimes to be given an additional mandatory 10 years prison sentence in addition to whatever sentence they are given once they are found guilty. The committee members were not against the recommendation, but asked that MOCA come to explain their requests further. One recommendation the members dismissed entirely was a suggestion from Chairman Dr. Horace Chang for the police to be given more powers of search under the anti-gang law. Detectives want to be allowed to search the premises or properties of an individual they suspect is benefiting from money made from crime. For instance, they want to be able to search the house of a girlfriend of a gang leader. If you want additional powers of search or seizure, etc., I think this is not the place to put them. I think that should go into the GACF Act or, or, or some other piece of legislation. Yeah. This act doesn't attempt to create any additional police powers. It's purely creating offences under the law, substantive offences that can be investigated, charged and prosecuted. Dwayne Anderson, TVJ News. Now we go to news on the Yu Chen's Wilson trial. Today, the court listened to testimony from a representative of a business establishment to which the gang members would often do business. The prosecutors tendered documents in court bearing the signatures relevant to the accused men and employees of that company. Now, TVJ's Kirk Wright has been following the Yu Chen's Wilson trial and now joins me live. First up, Kirk, uh, what happened today? All right, so remember we told you that um, there we, we were limited in some of the things that we could share um, with the court. Now, first up, two government witnesses in the trial who were also gang members told the court that most of the items of value from their robbery spree were sold to a business place in the corporate area. Remember also, we told you we were limited in some of the things we could share with in the trial. We can't disclose the name of that business establishment. Well, with that said, the representative of that business was in court today outlining the procedure persons have to follow to do business with the company. Those include 
uh, presenting a valid ID, fingerprint, telephone number, and as expected, they have to sign. The representative also said a computer-generated number is assigned to everyone doing business with the company. As it relates to the prosecution, they tendered into evidence documents outlining transactions some of the gang members did with the business over a two-year period. It also came out in court that at least one of the documents showed two transactions carried out by Chantal Gordon with the business. Remember, she's one of four females charged in the gang. One of the documents showed Chantal received $142,000 from two chains and a bracelet. Okay, so you spoke of that business, but what about the employees? Uh, were they involved in any way in, in, um, in, in some of the criminal activities? Well, it also came out in court that at least one of two employees were charged because he knew the items bought from the gang members were stolen. The men were described as two senior employees who regularly met targets set by the company and uh, the ones who taught the representative we spoke about the job. And who's on, on who, who will be um, testifying tomorrow? I think it is the representative of the business. It should be on tomorrow. Oh, he I'm giving more, more testimony. All right, thank you so much, Kirk Wright, with that report. We go to our primetime news follow-up now. More people living in Southeast St. Elizabeth are coming forward today with tales about the impact of Jisco Alpart's reopening on their health. The people say they are no longer interested in the dust money being paid and are instead demanding relocation. Our reporter, Andrew Laidley, has been working on this series. Andrew, the people want to move. Yes, Janella, the people want to move. They say they have had enough, Janella, and they are arguing that the $7,500 which they received as compensation is nothing compared to the impact the dust is having on their health. Now the residents who came forward today also disclosed that they are facing some intimidation over the issue. They told our news team that representatives from the company have tried to force them not to speak out by threatening to remove them from the compensation list. Because they say any old people talk, they don't, they don't get no justice. The residents in Southeast St. Elizabeth defiant that they will not be silenced. I spoke to the community rep, Mr. Orit Nemard, mm -hmm. and he said he's sending the reports and stuff like that, and up till now we haven't heard anything. I told him that I would sue the company for the sign I had. He said, I can't do that because I won't get anything out of it. They are now insisting that the company prepare a relocation package for them, which would bring a permanent solution to their health woes. White dust a morning time for me to put my water. Water, we can't drink the water, we can't do nothing at all. Similarly, cold similarly, in the evening time, we can't eat the food in peace. Yeah. All environment people in the they have to contest the uh, pollution and all that. Something with my deal with that. So, I come and come to kill with her. Uh, we want to locate, relocate with. I want to move from out of this pollution, so I'd like them to come and buy me out. But according to the senior manager of the Environmental Management Subdivision at the National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, Richard Nelson, securing relocation for the residents is entirely up to Jisco Alpart. The issue of relocation is not something NEPA would get directly involved with. Of course, any company that, I have, that has operated in an area where it is likely to be impact on residents, what we ask for is a, um, a grievance mechanism to be in place. And this grievance mechanism can range from compensating, com compensating persons as much as to relocating persons. In the meantime, the residents continue to cry for justice. To me sign for the little dibby dibby, $7,500, me can't talk. $7,500 is nothing to people and people health. We don't get anything. Right, we need justice. Andrew Leadley, TVJ News. Now, Andrew, you have been trying to reach uh, representatives from JUSCO and you finally got through. Yes, Janela, I was able to speak with a public relations officer at JISCO today. His name is Jermaine Saunders. Now, he said that the company would be speaking on the issues today at 3.30 p.m. However, when our news team got to JISCO where the meeting was to be held, we were told that the officials have postponed the meeting. Now, the public relations officer also said that the officials will have an internal meeting tomorrow and will make a public statement on Friday. 
I also posed a few questions to the company relating to the settlement agreement the residents were asked to sign and how the community representatives were selected, among other important issues, Janela. I was told that GISCO will have to seek medical and legal advice before responding specifically to my questions. I'm hoping we will see some answers to those questions coming out soon. All right. Thank you so much, Andrew Laidley. And uh, Primetime News returns after this break. Still ahead tonight, calls for referendum on abortion issue. And in business news, why telecommunications provider is in the hot seat. Welcome back. Continuing the news. There's a call this evening for the government to put a referendum to the people of Jamaica in finalizing its decision on whether abortion should be legalized. The declaration was made during today's sitting of a Parliament's Human Resources and Social Development Committee. TVJ's Kalisha Williams was there. Constant back and forth. It hurts to know that at this stage, these recommendations have not been implemented. And what we have instead is a reinvigorated thrust to perpetuate the culture of death in our society and to sanction the, the, the spilling of innocent blood in our streets and add to that blood which is already running rampant. We all love babies, we all love life and what persons have indicated is that this is not about pro-life or anti-life. Everyone here is pro-life. We are all pro-life. It's a question of choice. Personal stories. When I presented my perfectly healthy baby daughter to the doctor who had advised that I abort, his remark was, well, I am not God. I know of persons who have the same thing that you had, who, whose tumor would not shrink and was in the same situation as you were and had to have an abortion because that person's life would have been in danger and that person is me. In what seems to be a never-ending debate on whether or not the government should legalize abortion, it comes after Member of Parliament for St. Andrew West Rural, Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, brought a private member's motion before the House in 2018, calling on the government to repeal the legislation that makes abortion illegal. Now a call for the government to let the people decide. I think a referendum would be definitely the way to go in terms of deciding the right to life of the people. All right, so if we could, if we could just consider the people's opinions a little bit more, we'd really appreciate it. What was particularly eye-opening was this response from member of the Love March movement, Francesca Tavares. In quoting two recent studies, she countered argument which stated that there should be an exception for persons who are victims of rape and incest. Abortion in the case of rape and incest is a contraindication. In no case should it be made available to a rape victim or a victim of incest because it re-traumatizes the victim. That the pain and trauma that is caused by the abortion following a severely traumatic event, it, 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 it's completely, completely, um, completely compounds the situation. And that is what the, 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 the research found. Members of the committee will meet with 16 different groups over the next few months to review recommendations as to whether the law remains or not. Kelisha Williams, TVJ News. The hiring practices of the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica, PCJ, is again in the spotlight as a parliamentary committee continues to discuss a damning Auditor General's report on the entity. It was revealed that a number of persons were hired without interviews and assessments for jobs which were not advertised. TVJ's Andrea Chisholm reports. No interview, no reference check. Yet, the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica PCJ, Petrojam's parent company, hired a business intelligence support officer. The Auditor General's report also pointed out that the job which pays $7 million was not advertised. PCJ's acting group general manager, Brian Richardson, responded to queries from PAC member Peter Bunting. Could you explain how this person... Um came to be employed. Three persons were identified and all were interviewed, um, mostly by the group CFO at the time, and on his determination and also with the, um, discussions with Mr. Watson, um, 
settled on one individual, Ms. Balfour, because of her um, years of experience. In addition to the Business Intelligence Support Officer, from March 2015 to May 2018, the report listed 12 more positions which were not advertised or an interview or assessment not seen. That includes an executive assistant to the chairman and business development consultant. PCJ's Human Resource Manager Karen Elliott, who started in April 2018, said the LNG Administration Assistant was hired after participating in the PCJ's graduate internship program. The individual would have been interviewed initially for the graduate internship program, that is a part of the requirement. After she had completed the graduate internship program, an assessment was done, an evaluation of her performance over the period, and so the hiring managers thought that she fit the qualification requirements for a same. But there is, it says here that nothing is seen on an interview or assessment, not seen. So is it that is there and not provided or is not available? We've been looking back, we've been finding evidence that there is some amount of interview that was done. I, I, I recall one going through it with, with Karen, the, the, the notes were made on the back of the CV. What, what we have recognized is that the formality of it wasn't done, and unfortunately that is was, um, what we've put in place now is to ensure that we correct those. That issue aside, for the new permanent secretary, Carol Palmer. It cannot be that we continue business as usual, uh, which is all unusual in my estimation. It cannot be that you just decide that you need more people and you have money so you go ahead and totally oblivious of the policy direction that you must obtain from the government. I have made it very clear that we must return to the proper policies that govern operations. Andrea Chisholm, TVJ News. The minister with responsibility for overseeing the review of the education ministry, Carl Samuda, says that report could be done ahead of time. Mr. Samuda made the revelation as he gave an update on the investigations into the corruption scandal affecting that ministry. Seconded by the Prime Minister in March to the Education Ministry for a period of at least two months to review operations after a corruption scandal, and now just one month in, Carl Samuda says the review may be over soon. It's going to be through long before the time that was um, indicated. We are well advanced and we have already um, put the entire structure together. We have focused on the areas of greatest concern. He lists the areas of greatest concern as getting school books, furniture, maintenance and procurement policies right. And he said those are the areas where management deficiencies were found. The permanent secretary has indicated to all the various schools or regions within the country as to the policies that are going to dictate how the procurement program is going to work and no deviation from what is the, the budgeted figures. They don't just buy outside. It has to be within the confines of the amount allotted based on the request of the Ministry of Finance and the budget that we have. But when asked directly about the reason he's overseeing the education ministry now, in light of the corruption scandal which came to light in March, Mr. Samuda had this to say. It's an ongoing process, so I don't want to say anything that would compromise the already um, commenced investigation into that. You know, we have the Auditor General, we have all these other people investigating. What I'm focused on is making sure that whatever I find that needs to be corrected is acted upon immediately. I have looked at CMU and I've had discussions with CMU, but I'm not going there because, as I say, it's a subject of an investigation. Dashan Hendricks, TVJ News. Did you know that feeding your child or children a lot of fast foods as well as unripened bananas and boiled dumplings can lead to constipation? Well, it can. TVJ Shamela Pullen tells us more in this evening's edition of The Health Report. At least 40% of children seen at the Bustamante Hospital for Children in St. Andrew has some form of constipation. That's according to consultant pediatric surgeon, Dr. Noel McLennan. Constipation is when your child or children are finding it difficult to pass his or her stool. 
Dr. McLennan says the condition affects all age groups. However, it is often seen among children between ages four and five years. What we usually aim for is for the child to pass at least one soft stool per day every day. However, this is not the ideal in the vast majority of children. What is important is that the child has a regular pattern. So if that child's pattern is twice a week or three times a week, then that is that child's pattern. So once we can achieve that pattern on a particular balanced diet, that is what is important. Dr. McLennan says poor dietary intake is the main cause. So cons consuming white flour, consuming snacks that are high in starch, food that is poor in fiber, poor in water content. Those are some of the main foods that lead to constipation. So food like green banana, that will lead to constipation in some children. Apart from discomfort, Dr. McLennan says oftentimes constipation leads to malnutrition. This can become a problem in that the child tummy may become significantly distended, the child may become lethargic, the child may be, feel listless at school, feel like he or she has no energy. And so, so, and this is all because of the poor nutritional intake, as well as the stool burden, what we call a stool burden that a child has to work with. And again, the doctor is reminding parents and guardians to give their children more fruits, vegetables, and plenty of water. With your health report, I'm Shamela Pullen wishing you good health. And now a reminder of our current affairs program, All Angles, comes on this evening. And host Dion Jackson Miller joins us with a preview. Dion? Yes, and indeed we're talking politics. We're talking politics with young people because, of course, low voter turnout, voter apathy, and a generation of Jamaicans not wedded to either political party. We're going to be having young people coming on to set with us to talk about how the youth vote could impact future elections. That's coming up at 8.30 right after primetime news. And now it's Janella on the smart board. Thank you so much, Dion. I don't have to take off my shoes to come on your level. Tonight we're asking this question. What do you think can be done to tackle the increase in domestic violence in Jamaica? We have a comment here from uh, uh, Dr. Alpheus Lewis who says, seek counseling from the early stage if you want it to work. If not, move on. We have another comment and it comes from Donette Brooks. She's saying the only thing that can be done is walk away and loud woman them for live. I'm not even going to attempt to read this in Patwa, but yeah. We have another one that says from, well, it's from Andre Written Song Smith. He says, we need behavioral and society change mediation and consolidation needs to become ingrained. Males need to know expressing themselves emotionally isn't being soft. And we have one more. It is from Chantel Green who says, if two can't get along, then it might as well they separate. Keep those comments coming. Facebook.com slash Television Jamaica and tweet us at Television Jam. I will learn to read Patwa one day. The business day and news from overseas are after the break. Please stay with us. Good evening and welcome to the business day. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Telecommunications company Cable & Wireless, which trades as flow, may not be flowing so well this evening. The company is facing criticisms from trade unions across Latin America and the Caribbean, injustices against flow employees. TVJ's Andrew Lady reports on a press briefing this morning hosted by the unions. Telecom's company Flow announced a slew of new products yesterday, but today representatives from the UNI Liberty Latin America Trade Union Alliance assembled in Jamaica to expose some of the company's employment practices. This is a meeting that we've had to call because of the behavior of the company throughout the region. Um, the behavior is not just in Jamaica, it's in Antigua, it's in Grenada, it's in St. Lucia. The company has gone totally rogue and totally unbiased towards our industrial relations practice in the Caribbean. He says the company has been defiant. They have taken a stance that because they have money, they can do what they think they have to do to get what they want. 
A major problem is the company's outsourcing practices, which the unions say take good jobs out of the Caribbean. The commonality is to remove the high-end jobs and place new employees in the low-end aspect of their company operations. So they have legacy, the legacy employees of cable and wireless have been phased out, made redundant, while they're employing new employees on lower conditions. So you have two persons working in the same department, doing the same job. One is legacy cable and wireless, higher paid, better benefits, and one is, is now Liberty Global, lower paid, less benefits, doing the same job. The unions have pledged to carry a motion to the UNI ICTS World Conference in August, which will represent a global push, insisting that the company change its practices. Andrew Laidley, TVJ News. To our regular Wednesday business news item now, gas prices are going up tomorrow. A liter of 87 and 90 will sell for $2.28 more. Automotive diesel will go up by $2.50, while $2.37 will be added to the price of ultra-low sulfur diesel. Kerosene will go up by $2.94. Propane up by $0.26, cents and butane will be sold for $0.25 cents more. The Jamaican dollar continued to slide against the U.S. dollar today. The greenback sold for $130.66. The Canadian dollar, $99.63. It cost $170.58 for the pound sterling, while the euro went for $147.21. To the stock market now, the JSE index gained 1,415 points today, while the junior market index is down 30 points. Among the winners, Cygnus Credit Investments U.S. dollar shares, Barita Investments, Supreme Ventures, Jamaican Tees and Proven Investments. On the losing side, Stanley Motor, Derrimont Trading, Jamaica Producers Group, Caribbean Cream and Elite Diagnostic. And that's the business day. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Good evening. The business. And the primetime news package continues with sports right after this break. Hello and welcome to this evening's edition of E-Prime. I am Daydran. Pulse brand going global. Pulse Investments Limited aims to launch their brand in the fashion world by positioning the brand in the African lifestyle market. Speaking at the Pulse Global Media Launch held yesterday at the Palace Cineplex in Kingston, initiatives were outlined to push the brand forward, which included an African model search and a reality TV series. Do you have what it takes to become a supermodel? I am Romain Gordy, judge of the Million Dollar Caribbean Model Search, which discovered people like Olivia Burke, Cole Cover Girl, Ray Barrett, Ralph Lauren, campaign model. This is your chance to be part of the biggest model event in Africa. Other initiatives which will be implemented this year include Pulse Schools Model Search, New York Model Search and a joint African and Caribbean fashion event right here in Jamaica. Known for launching the careers of several top-tier Jamaican models, including Lloyd Samuels, Arane Barrett and Nadine Willis, the move to go global will see Pulse forming strategic alliances with key partners. Pulse chairman Kingsley Cooper noted the importance of the alliance with the international partners. Very important because it allows you, for example, Fashion One in, in Lagos. They go across the entire African continent. So imagine being able to reach all of Africa at once. You know, without a long period of building, 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 as we have had to do in the Caribbean, for example. So what it took us 40 years to do here, we can do in two because of those partnerships. Paul's co-managing director Safia Cooper also outlined that the brand is venturing into tourism with the launch of Pulse's rooms and Pulse suites at Villa Renai. It really is a part of the, the, the underpinning and strengthening of our Jamaica-based business through the thrust into leisure and hospitality. And um, come summer 2019, we'll open 67 suites at Villa Renai, similarly for long and short-term stays. So, you know, it's, it's really maximizing the property, maximizing the environment of, and the cultural exchange um, where we can invite visitors in, fit them, room them, host them, take them on tours, you name it. So it, it's really a great opportunity brought on 
by the demand, especially for rooms in Kingston. Pulse will launch its African model search in cities across Nigeria in July, with the final slated for November of this year. The African model search will also recruit models in Gabon, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. Now in news overseas, Popcorn and Drake light up London. Dance Soul Superstar Popcorn was a special guest on Canadian rapper Drake's Assassination Vacation Tour, which was held last night at the O2 Arena in London. As Champagne Pappy welcomed the unruly boss on stage, the London Massive erupted as Popcorn performed his hits, including Only Man She Want. <laughs> marked the first time Drake and Popcorn performed on the same stage since the unruly boss officially became a member of OVO Records earlier this year. Drake is currently on the last leg of his assassination vacation tour of Europe with Tory Lanez. That's it for this evening's edition of E-Prime. I'm Daydren. Thank you for watching. Welcome back. And before we wrap up, some more comments from our friends on Facebook and Twitter. Janela? I'm not ruling out calling one of you for backup as I read these comments. Our feedback question for tonight is, what do you think can be done to tackle domestic violence in Jamaica? Okay, so we have a comment here from Cynthia Webster who says, when incidents are reported to the police, they must act with alacrity. They are too casual. Another one here from Latoya Tisha Britton who says, in my opinion, we need to stop promoting some of these songs because it has a lot of bad influence on young people. I think I have time for one more. And it's from Leonie Lyston. She says, teach our boys how to deal with their emotions and anger from early. So as an adult, they know how to deal with simple situations. Herman, it's back to you. I made it. I made yes, it. Made it. <laughs> 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 I'll applaud it. Janela, you've been here for how long now? It does not matter. I <laughs> bet you. Reading Patois, or Jamaican Patois, is the most difficult thing ever. You need to get selected poems by Louise Bennett and start practicing yeah, with there's that. A, there's a oh, structure really? to it. Yes. Oh, oh there is. Yeah, yeah, explain that to me. There's a structure to it. <laughs> what is the structure? Y-U-H is you. Plus the book. There's the even book. a word. <laughs> one, I need to lend it to you. I have said it. To me at UA. And Andrew will be giving that to you. I'll lend it to you yeah, tomorrow. One, one professor me. said to me at UA, it can't be a language unless there's a word which means to think. <laughs> and I said, well, there is a word which means to think in Patois. What's that? Another time I said, Penny. <laughs> oh, penny penny next move to Penny what? Oh. And I became a star of that. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> That's all the time we have for this evening, folks. Thank you so much for watching and pleasant viewing. I'm sorry.